I think as adults, we pretty much know where we stand, what class we are, what we've grown into, what financial brackets we've settled into, who we eventually omit from our lives, or, you know, former cliques that we've had, and if you're in one town, you might be prejudiced against another town, you know, there's stereotypes and so on, and this is learned pretty early on, it's pretty early uh, learned behavior, because when you're kids, you know, you're, you're picking and choosing friends or discriminating, you know, there's different ethnicities, different income levels, and, you know, these bonds are formed, or little clubs, and it gets worse when you go to elementary school, because now you see kids from another town, and it's like the Twilight Zone, and you, it's like, is, is that an alien? Like, I remember in second grade, there was this girl that was a Christian, so she wasn't allowed. She, like, omitted herself. I don't know if she had a note or if they had a parent-teacher conference with her parents, but she couldn't participate with doing a really uh, cheesy Halloween craft where you make a mask out of a grocery bag, like a paper grocery bag where you cut eye holes. So the way she participated to just say she did was she wrote praise the Lord on the bag. And I can, I can hear the teacher now saying, uh, leave her alone. And that was really strange to me. You know, I was like, wow, that's really bizarre. Like, I've never seen that before. And, um, you know, in a more general pool of kids, it's just about who's not cool and who's cool. Everyone is actually trying to be hip, be in an it crowd. No one wants to be rejected. And for me, it was really easy to determine who's who. Was whatever kid would make a branding synonymous with the object, for example... A cool kid would say, let's play Hot Wheels. A more square kid would be like, do you want to play Matchbox cars? So they would automatically make this branding synonymous with those 164th scale toy cars. Because a kid doesn't say that. I never heard a kid say, I have a 164th toy car, do you want to come run it down the ramps? They don't say that. They make a branding synonymous because they watch it all day on whatever kids network. And I always knew that the cool kids liked Hot Wheels and the, the lamer kids liked Matchbox cars because the offerings, like Matchbox would have just a regular Dodge Caravan and maybe it would have a stripe down the side and its greatest feature would be it had like a permanently opened sunroof and you could look inside and like, wow, there's textured furniture in there. And then from the kid's perspective, it was like, let's shove food inside of it. So there's been a Crunchberry in this now collectible car since 1988. It's probably still crunchy too. But on the other hand, Hot Wheels would have a skull with an engine in each eye socket and the driver's seats in the mouth. Matchbox would have Chevrolet Corvette. Now, Hot Wheels had a Corvette, but that Corvette was a limousine with three axles, a hot tub, snakes for headlights, and you would sit on the roof and the chair could swivel around. Matchbox would have a Ford Tempo in forest green. Hot Wheels would be an engine with wheels on it. You sit on top of the engine, and then you wear another engine on top of your head, like a really powerful helmet. And then, like, Hot Wheels came with a loop and a ramp, with, like, a catch ramp. You know, it wasn't totally dangerous. But they were promoting, like, being a daredevil and, and you know, dangerous things. I feel like Matchbox came with, like, one of those uh, little pamphlets with, like, a Bible passage, and then it would just come with a card that would say the, uh, the year, make, and model of the car. But here's the thing. Like, let's say you do have a sleepover with the kid who had the Praise the Lord Halloween mask, and you have to walk on eggshells because you have to go to church in the morning is you'll realize there's some pragmatism about the parents, uh, you know, purchasing decisions. 
Uh, and that's because they did mission work where the Hot Wheels were made. You know, kids building toys for other kids. And, you know, you'd learn that, that was the reason maybe why they weren't uh, stuffing their kids' stocking with Satan's Revenge or a dual engine Cobra Snake. And uh, they knew the build quality was bad. Like, Matchbox came from London. You know, Hot Wheels had these really cheap uh, wheels on them. They were like open drums. They had four axles, so they bent really easily. They were like 30% diameter of a paper clip. And one wheel in the front would always bend up, so your car would only roll on three wheels, and it would go down the ramp at like a canted angle or something. Now, the ones from London, Matchbox cars, that's like an adult hobby in London. Like, model railroading. Like, everything has to be small over there in England, you know? So it's like two guys are at a luncheon, and it's perfectly acceptable for a guy to go, Charles, have you seen my new Austin Healy? And the guy's, like, looking out the window with a monocle, like, No, I have not. And he goes... It's of miniature, and he is like one sixty fourth scale, and he pulls it out of a cigarette container and like, you know, just rolls it gently over to uh, his friend, and it pings his little teacup. I mean, try that in America. You're thirty years old, like, you know, I'm gonna go to Denny's today, find an attractive girl, sit next to her at the booth, like. I see you're enjoying your Grand Slam, but would you like to see my engine-powered Velociraptor? I'm sure she'll quietly dismiss you while you slowly zip your toy back into your fanny pack. But that was the thing with uh, Matchbox and Hot Wheels, and you know, if the kid with glasses ever came over to your house and you were the Hot Wheels kid, his Dodge Caravan's going down the uh, loop and ramp without any friction and you're like left sobbing in the corner holding your dragon car wondering why it looks so badass and then of course you usually force a trade or something and you make the kid cry the kid goes home and his parents probably say something like it sounds like he stole from peter to give to paul I don't even think that means that, but something like that. I'm probably going to get flack now on YouTube where people are saying, like, those were uh, Hot Wheels specialty vehicles. They also made regular vehicles. Anyway.